Hi there, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Neville Judd from Hexagon TV. Workflows using geoscientific imagery are accelerating efforts to define geological and physical properties of the resource at Tenke Fungarume Mine in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Photos of diamond core and sample cuttings are now valuable sources of immediate data and support a continuous modeling process. Geologist Bob North is here to discuss the benefits of this improved workflow and how it integrates with Hexagon's mine plan software. Bob, thanks very much for joining us today. My pleasure, Noel. Thank well, you. Happy to be here. Good to have you here. So, Bob, why is capturing and documenting geoscientific imagery so important? Well, <clears throat> the core hole is your fundamental information in building a geologic model that's going to be the basis of your reserves and your resources. And so they're very expensive to get core, it takes a lot of time, takes a lot of effort to get it, to manage it. So what we want to do is make the most of it. And so it's common through the years that they would take photographs of the core and by whatever method happened to be in vogue at the time from slides to now today digital photography. So it's a very important thing to document what's in the drill holes because building a geologic model requires you to then fill in the gaps between the holes. Well, the more you know about what's in those holes helps you to fill in the gaps. I see. So give us an overview of Tenke Fungarume, um, the site and the traditional challenges of, of, of managing the core photography there. The, the challenges there traditionally were this was a project that started in 2008. And so because of that, I mean, we had digital photography. We could, we could store photos digitally. So we had that advantage. But we had a, it was a tremendous disadvantage in that if you wanted to look for a particular hole, you had to know what year it was drilled because that's how we stored it. It was stored on a server at the site and accessible only by people on site. So if somebody else, say a consultant, was going to do work for you, needed to have some photographs of core for, say, slope stability studies, we would have to somehow get them those photos. You could email them like a few at a time, or you could give them a, an external drive. And now those are large, but in those days they were even smaller. A few megabytes was a lot. So it was, uh, it, it's always been challenging to share the information with others. And even if you were working on a project yourself, you would have to, you'd have to say, okay, what photos am I going to need in this project? You'd have to copy them to your local laptop or your local machine so that you could use them there. Or if you left site, you could use them and you could share them with other people. Say, I want to talk, we want to develop a new exploration program that's going to go out somewhere. We want to talk to the vice president of exploration here in Phoenix. We have to actually get him the photos somehow. Mm -hmm. And if we're carrying them, then we have to anticipate what's he going to ask about. So, I mean, it was really handy. Now we can have them all. Right. So the images are captured and stored by the Imago system. Mm -hmm. um, tell us how that works. <clears throat> well, again, back to the, the traditional method was that somebody would stand up over the the box and take a photograph. You could try to get it in focus and you'd have somebody's boot in the photo all the time. Well now we've got a, a setup, it's a rolling cart. Mm. So the, in the, with the camera at a fixed length from the core, the core boxes are all the same size. Mm. You can roll this camera uh, over the top of it. It's got the cart has a, a laptop, it's Wi-Fi enabled. You can take a photograph, look at the screen and see what that photograph is going to look like. Make sure it's in focus. Again, the traditional problem was always oh, lots of them out of focus, terrible photos. Right. But, you know, they just moved on. Well, now we can ensure that we have quality control. We can look at it. We can say, ah, that's a good one. Keep it and then move to the next box and the next box. We started off with one of these uh, portable uh, photo uh, towers. Now we have two of them, uh, so you can have multiple ones, multiple people working at the same time. And so, and then you can upload it to the system pretty much in real time. That same day we can get them loaded to the, so that somebody in uh, here at the office in Phoenix can use, still look at them. Interesting. So how does Imago work with MindPlan? How does that come together? The way that comes together is the, the Imago system is going to look for a drill hole ID that must be unique. Of course, that every drill hole database is like that. 
and then it has to have a from and a to, and it can locate it based on that, locate the photos. So what, the, what they've done is they've worked with uh, uh, Hexagon and the mind plan system so that I can look in a viewer. I'm working on a project. I have to set it up. I have to do some a little bit of pre-processing so that I say I'm going to work on, say, the Pumpy project. I get those holes. I process them. Now for the entire project, all the photographs we have for that project, are I have access to those from the Imago system, the management system. And so when I bring up the drill hole view in uh, mine plan, it says I can um, query for uh, images. Mm -hmm. So I query it, and it will bring up uh, an image viewer, and it will bring up that core because it's accessing from the, whether it's a, an acquire view of file 11, 12, or Toric. It looks for the drill hole ID, the from and the to. It finds it brings it up, and now I have a view of that core right there in my mind plan viewer. And we all work on multiple screens these days, so I move it over and size it the way I like. And uh, then you can you can look at the, the next hole over, or look, recently look at a lot of breccia. Say, I want to look, what do those breccias look like? Are they the same, are they the different? What, what do they look like? You know, they're all kind of just, well, we get the things color coded by rock type and all these green are the breccias. Well, I want to look at them and see if they're all the same. And then the, the beauty of it is I can share that then in the mind plan viewer. I can make the block model, bring the block model up, and so you can say, well, this is a high grade zone. You light up the blocks by grade mm -hmm. and say, what drill holes are driving that? Now you know. Right. So I can go to this, well, let's look at this hole. And you click on that and it comes up and you can see, look at the photographs. So you can actually see what's driving, what's in your geologic model. Very cool. How do you, how do you quantify the benefits of, of this improved workflow at 10K? It gives you the opportunity to maximize your time when you're going to go back and sometimes you go back and relog core or look at it again, go to the core shed. It really maximizes that time because you can, you can go through everything fairly quickly and say, what does that core look like? Or do I need to go look at that? Is that a good call? And you can tell from the photographs, especially when they get to be pretty good quality. It's also when you're planning, you want to make a, a drill plan for next year, or you want to do some infill drilling. You can look at what the drill holes look like, and you can better target where you put your next hole to uh, increase the confidence level in your model. And so that has the advantage of, you can save drill meters that way. And even more important is if you're talking to some management people that happen to be in Phoenix or Beijing, you can go and you can sit down with them and look at it mm. and use it as a tool to say, this is why we need to drill here. Right. And it brings up, so it's going to help you with in budgeting, we hope. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it really, it's really a big advantage to be able to look at, the, it brings the rocks back into this computer model you're building. Right. Bob, thanks so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. We'd like to thank our guest, Bob North, for joining us today. To find out more information about this topic, visit hexagonmining.com. And to watch additional episodes, visit hxgnspotlight.com. Thanks for tuning in.